The Joel Fernandez Show is a talk show channeled spontaneously from source to edify and help raise the vibrations of truthers, starseeds, Christic alchemists, and others who have seen through this illusionary matrix into messianic consciousness by discussing hidden knowledge, higher dimensions, and manifesting so that we can shine our light for everyone to see and co-create the earth that we know we actually deserve to live in. Don't! I gotta go! I'm working on the show! Welcome back to Joel's Bowl! I mean, wait a minute, this is the Joel Fernandez Show. I gotta stop doing that. Guys, this is the Joel Fernandez Show. I'm your host, Joel Fernandez, and I've got a really busy day going on today, but I just thought I'd stop in and share some stuff with you guys because, like, we have reached a breakthrough. Literally, this weekend is when the breakthrough, it, it's already done. It's actually already broken through, and things are already happening in the physical realm, like, for example, Justin Trudeau's personal sniper has walked off duty and now they're rescinding mandates for the jab in Ontario and Quebec for healthcare workers. Like, really? We have already broken through, but we got to keep pressing in, keep maintaining that state of being and knowing that, you know, what we've manifested, what we've put out in the causal realm is an absolute, absolute reality. I got to be careful, man. My tea is over boiling here. That's actually not tea, that's broth. But guys, I am gonna prepare some food here. I actually just boiled peas and cabbage, which uh, is pretty tasty by itself, but I'm gonna be adding some few stuff to it. So uh, let's get that done. And then uh, we're gonna meet up in Studio A. Talking about food right here, I've just got some soup. Uh, this is just like cabbage and peas. And I'm going to be adding some spinach and tomato and some other stuff just to make it tastier. Because uh, peas and cabbage is pretty much really tasty all by itself. So let's strain the water out and add our veggies. So here we have the soup after we've strained out all the water pretty much. Most of the water. I still want to keep a little bit because that's just how I like it. And oh, camera's getting fogged up. That's better. And uh, I'm just gonna throw this. I got some frozen spinach here. And we're just gonna dump the peas and cabbage on top of that and allow that to kind of thaw. So, yeah, I'm just gonna chop up this last tomato of mine. I gotta go for groceries uh, probably tomorrow. But you know what? I don't even muzzle myself when I go in. It's crazy now, the second lockdown, nobody even cares. Before, they used to have people standing at the door and making sure you're muzzled up and got that poison to put on your hands but guess what guys you be the light and before you know it people will start to realize that what they're doing is just not just just not just just not just guys let's get this tomato chopped there we go and bam just like that and we're just going to add a bit of celtic salt to that and some pepper some minced garlic and some ground flaxseed Cause you gotta get those omegas too, hey? As a vegan, get those omegas in. And I'm also gonna add a dash of turmeric. Turmeric. Apparently there's an extra R in there, which I didn't even know. I'm just gonna mix that all up. Par, par, par. <laughs> mix, mix, mix. Can you do that? And that is beautiful, ready to devour. And a bit of cumin as well, actually. This breakthrough has already happened, guys. This breakthrough has already happened. And this is gonna be the last video that you see of me with a beard because we've just achieved a breakthrough and probably the live stream, I won't even have this beard. So yeah, because that's when the Constellar month actually ends. And that Constellar month is Kanya, which corresponds to the actual constellation of the Virgin, not the tropical sign because that's like way past but like i said new calendar for a new era and we are literally moving in and this breakthrough is already done so on the morning before the 6th of november we are done we are done and we are already broken through we've already broken through we've already broken through and i woke up this morning just knowing hey get rid of this thing on the 5th of november do you know what day it is evie um november the 4th 
Not anymore. Remember, remember the 5th of November, the gunpowder, treason, and plot. I know of no reason why the gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. First, the overture. Yes. Yes, the strings. Listen carefully, can you hear it? Now the brass. I can hear it. But man, it's good to be back at home base with a nice hot cup of amen and woohoo. Why do I say amen and woohoo? It's because all of God's promises are yes and amen. Busy, busy, busy. And we have broken through some really big hindrances that have been placed over humanity in the causal realm. And we will see justice prevail. Like literally, the intensity of this time period, it's just like... Oh, I just know things are breaking through and we're seeing it in the physical. Like I said, rescinding mandates, all of this stuff. Hey, if they really wanted to get healthcare workers out of the system and replace them with their own military or, you know, whatever thugs, guess what? They would have done that already. They actually have it all set up so that they can do that. But they keep postponing the dates because they know their time is up. They were just trying to do this to get as many people on board as possible before the end actually came. Now we're seeing the end has finally come. And just watch what happens. Checkmate is already declared by the kingdom of heaven. This is just as it came. This is as raw as it came. But Justin Trudeau, hear the word of the Lord. I'm cutting away those from around you who think you control. You will try to pull their strings, but they will not respond as in times before. Justin, you've gone too far. And those around you are starting to turn away from you and your foul ways. They shall no longer cover up for you. They shall no longer protect what is hidden. You will no longer know who you can trust. This charade has gone on for far too long. No longer shall I stand by as you destroy this nation of Canada that I love. No longer shall I let the enemy prevail through corrupt practices. I've heard the cry of my beloved in this land and they've pleaded for mercy. They've cried out in distress. And I've heard their cries. And I shall answer them. And so I shall bring justice to this nation. And I'm coming after you. And you cannot escape me. This, there is nowhere that you can run to hide that I do not see. Justin Trudeau, I will not be mocked. How? Oh! So now is the time to repent for all you've done and all that you've planned to destroy this nation and my people. Cease and desist now. Let my people go. Oh! Let them go. Let them go! Oh. Oh. For if you resist me, I will come in ways that you know not. For I am the lion of the tribe of Judah, and you will hear me roar. 
I will release the hosts of heaven upon you and your regime and upon this land to bring justice and deliverance for my people. Not one will be left standing in places I did not ordain. From the parliament to the Supreme Court, says the Lord of hosts. Justin Trudeau, now is the hour to make your choice. Ho! Go ahead, make your move. Ho! And I will make mine. Either way, I win. <laughs> and holy is the word of the Lord. Checkmate, Trudeau. Checkmate. But yeah, I still got the reasoning sesh to edit for Friday. The problem with that is that it takes so long to export. Otherwise, I'd probably be able to edit at least two videos a day. But right now, I just can't do it that way because of the time involved. But guys, it doesn't matter. This message is still finding a way to come out every single day. And I'm like, man, do I need a break? <laughs> Not from this, not from this. This is literally the best thing I can dedicate myself to. But I really do have a lot to do after this recording. I'm going to be not editing. I'm going to have to get to Studio B and practice the keys for about 40 hours today. I practice 40 hours every day because that's the only way you can actually be a Ling Ling. It's not just playing. It's also I compose music. So you know what? Before we carry on with the show... um. I'm just going to share one of the pieces I composed, just like on a whim. Literally, I just received downloads and this happened, so enjoy. And that's what you can do too, guys. Not necessarily write this kind of music, but you can download things, whatever you're here to do. Just tap in and download that. That's a little piece of the puzzle that will literally manifest more of the broader perspective, more of that bigger picture of what we've come here to be. And that's utopia. Literally, utopia is possible. We got to start telling ourselves that. We got to start convincing ourselves of that because the system has taking it out of us. It's beating it out of us through submission in school. You know, it, what is school? It's like you go there in the morning, you can't leave till evening. You have your allotted time to eat. You have allotted break time or recess. In the school system, they don't want us to learn about money because they just want to pump out good employees that do what they're told. I mean, if you look at school, it's opposite of what it takes to be successful in real life. Don't make a mistake. Do as you're told. Take, take tests by yourself. Don't cooperate. Do it by yourself. Do it on your own. And um, the last thing was, uh, oh, there's only one right answer. No, there's tons of answers to a, a problem. So you come out of school scared to death of making a mistake. You do everything on your own. You don't cooperate. There's no synergy. There's no brainstorming. And there's only one right answer. Everybody wants to get the right answer. There's no one right answer. So I think people come out of school paralyzed. I think the school system is criminal in that it kills a child's spirit of learning. You know, some a child goes into school all excited about, yeah, I'm gonna learn and it's gonna be great. And then the teacher says, sit down and shut up. Don't talk, we don't care what you're interested in. And that's not life, life is community. And then we're programmed with fear to answer the right answer, even if we know the accepted answer is not the real answer especially if the curriculum's manipulated. We just answer the right answer to get the right grade, but then that's training us for life to do what's acceptable in, in order to achieve, in order to move up that ladder. But there's no gains 
in real self-development that way. You're only gaining maybe with a promotion or something, but even that is, you know, what are the sacrifices you're making to get there? It's like that movie Click, you know? He's trying to get a promotion the whole movie through. That's going me to my promotion. So here's the Michael Newman, the greatest partner I could ever dream of. Here. Thank you. Thank you, guys. My family thanks you. I'm going to do the best I can, and I won't let you down. I, I promise. Yeah. Yeah. Congratulations, Mr. Congratulations. This is good. Thank you. How's it feel, killer? Feels incredible, now, sir. You earned it. I'm telling you. Not just because of that Watch Sohito project either, but for helping me pick up the slack now that I'm spending time with my special lady. Hey, Dinky. <laughs> Are you kidding me? You guys have been dating a couple of months now? That's pretty huge for this one. <laughs> <laughs> no, the first few months were easy. It was the one-year hump that was the tough part. Her inappropriate weekend with my brother in Cabo while well, I was a potential speed bump, but... Well, Dr. Bergman helped us work through it, didn't he, honey? Mm. Hey, how, how's it doing for you and Donna? Dr. Bergman? What do you mean? Oh, you know what, sweetie? It's none of our business. Let's let Michael bask in his glory. Cheers. Bask away, partner. <laughs> <laughs> Took that bastard a year to promote me? What else did I miss? But he loses his family, he loses his health, he loses everything, and he doesn't even know his children are growing up. Can I help you? Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Ben? That's you? Look how big you got! You're enormous! Look who's talking, Captain Twinkie in the SS, fat ass! It's really good for my self-esteem. Maybe if you would take me like to Pilates like you said you would, people wouldn't think I was Rosie O'Donnell. Come on, I love you! Bring me back to Twinkies! Dad, can you please stop yelling? It is so embarrassing. Because I'm a daughter. Mom, I'm going to Derek's! That's you, Samantha? When did you get boobs? The same time you did, Dad. No, can I go? Whoa, 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 whoa. Who the hell is this Derek guy? Duh, my boyfriend, the hottest boy in school. Hello. Oh, he's going to be really hot when I burn his house down. Now you get your ass upstairs. You put some normal clothes on. Why are you so mean to me? Get him on now! And wipe off all that makeup! Right. All of that is taken away from him. And in the end, does he get the promotion? I got to be careful putting these clips in movies because then YouTube just censors it. But whatever. Whatever. Now it's good broth. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna get some more. Give me a sec. <laughs> Manifest the best. Arrest those members of the 13 family crests. Amazing stuff, guys. Amazing stuff. And we are literally seeing the kingdom of heaven being downloaded. We are literally seeing this transcending happen in our own DNA. And that's why they're trying to enforce this genetic therapies. Because they know. They know if they don't do anything, we've already entered into this new age. We're already starting to see things unfold. We're already starting to receive downloads. And whatever was hidden in the old age, those of us that are awake are able to see right through it. Of course, there are people that are still asleep that will just continue carry on the propaganda. But guess what? The more the truth is revealed, even the media is starting to admit things that they wouldn't even talk about like, you know, even a couple months ago. We're just reaching a breaking point. When we cross that threshold, it's just entering into a new building. That's what a threshold is, right? And that building is the kingdom of heaven. That building is literally manifesting on the earth. And that's why I talk so much about the messianic age. That's why I talk so much about tapping in and manifesting your destiny. Because if you don't live out your destiny, what are you doing? What are you doing? Really, that's a question. What are you doing?
Are you living out someone else's destiny? Are they paying you for your time, which is non-refundable? Really, that's what a nine to five job is. They're buying your time from you, but time is the only thing that, you know, expires as you live out your life. Every second, you're a second closer to leaving. And what are they giving to you for that? Some cash? You know, that cash can buy a lot of things, but it can't buy your time back. It can't make you young again. Or can it? Maybe we're moving into a new era when that is possible, but that's not going to be possible through their manipulation and control. That's going to be possible through all this free energy, things like med beds being releasing to the public. I'm going to start getting really deep in these episodes, but in this episode, I'm going to try and tone it down a bit, but I am going to share some stuff here. So, uh, Let's see what's on this computer of mine, shall we? This computer has got a whole lot of stuff. And you know what? Let's revisit the Illuminati card game. I haven't talked about this for a few episodes, but this is how I started the show. Just talking about this and what's in here. Let's have a look down the rabbit hole. Or the Taurus hole. It's literally like a Taurus hole because it's just infinite. Just keeps on going, keeps on going. You just keep uncovering new things. Uh, let's see here. Illuminati cards to cover. I even made a file listing this out. So let's see what is interesting here. So this is one card that actually is linked to AI. Eliza or Eliza. Eliza. We call it Eliza. It's like that piano piece by Beethoven, you know? For Elise. Is it really alive or does it just think it is? Eliza can be linked to any computer group or to the network. That group may take an extra action each turn, but if that extra action ever results in a roll of 11 or 12, Eliza has crashed. Discard this card and expose all your hidden plot cards. Gadget. That kind of reminds me of Siri too. Or actually the name is kind of similar to Alexa. I wonder if that's a coincidence or not. Does it just think it's alive? Well, it's not biologically alive. It doesn't have DNA, but that doesn't mean that everything around us doesn't have a cause that actually manifests that object. That's what we're talking about in the causal realm. And though we have these causal spirit bodies, they exist on a much higher dimension because of what we manifest as in the physical bodies. Literally, our physical body is just a shadow of the causal body. But this is interesting that it's linked to computers and now they're talking about implanting a chip and now you have the metaverse from Facebook. It's really interesting actually talking about what happened with Facebook because what actually happened was there was like prophets that actually went down to the Supreme Court and called down for justice, like not man's justice because they saw that the Supreme Court was corrupt as hell. But they called down for justice, and just that day, I believe it was, Facebook crashed for six hours. What is Facebook? It's a tech giant. And when we look back at the story of David and Goliath, when that pebble went and sunk right into his forehead, literally the Hebrew writings say it fell like a stone being dropped into the brook. It was going so fast, probably like supersonically, that... It didn't even knock him back. He actually fell forward on his face. And we saw the giant fall on his face book. And they lost billions. But now they're coming back and they're talking about this metaverse, which is like a virtual reality you just plug into. And then all this stuff will start manifesting around you. You know, kind of like the Tesla cars. The closer they get to each other, the, they just start talking to each other. That's what they want to do for us because they want to control our minds. They want to control our very thoughts. And what better expose of this than, you know, when What's-His-Face was running for president, what was the slogan on his podium? It was battle for the soul of a nation. They want to battle for the soul of a nation. It's one thing to battle for the souls of individuals, but the soul of a nation, that opens a whole other door. But Facebook is calling this meta, and meta can also mean, you know, the beyond. It's like the metaphysical, but actually, you've got to look at these things, what they mean in Hebrew, because there's always a hidden meaning in Hebrew that they don't tell you it actually means. And meta means it is dead, or he is dead. And guess what? This giant has fallen on his face, and it is dead. This is just the illusion perpetuating a false narrative, just like they did to try and get everybody to line up for the jabs, knowing that that agenda is fallen. 
It's like the way YouTube censors it. Why can't you say anything against it? Why can't you even challenge the narrative? It's because they want as many people in while they still can get it. But light always overpowers darkness. And as we see, things have already come crashing down, like just with the mandates for the healthcare workers. Just watch what happens now. Spain has said no to them. Countries like Norway and Denmark have literally said no more lockdown. Like, yeah, Victoria in Australia is gone to utter tyrannical control, martial law, just like beating up on civilians and checkpoints and all of this kind of stuff. Tear gas, literal violence in the streets. But if you look at Melbourne, and I knew this since Santos used to talk about it, Melbourne is literally run by the Freemasons. You look at the crest for the police force there, it's like they're not even hiding it. I won't even get into that, man. We're looking at the Illuminati playing cards, and I'm sure there's something there that will talk about that too. Hidden influence. I think I covered this one before, but here we have a judge hammering the gavel, as in Arthur's court case. Arthur went in and he didn't stand a chance against the corruption. They just said, you know, you're making money, you're becoming popular. And this old guy, Jermaine, he's like so unpopular, even his friends don't like him. People have come up to Archer straight up and said, you know what, I knew this guy, nobody likes him. I'm not allowed to travel for 18 months, he says. He says, I was able to go to the States and raise money, therefore the penalty should be huge because I have means to raise money. This has nothing to do with law and order. This is a political vendetta by the Premier of Alberta. Personal vendetta using the court system to penalize a pastor that just wants to be left alone. I wanna be left alone, leave me be. Our church is the healthiest church in the country. We're not dogs. Mr. Germain, I have a message for you. I'm not a dog and I will not wear a muzzle. He's literally going to die a hermit and not the good kind of hermit, if you know what I mean. But the hidden influence has this guy in the shadows behind the gavel. And, you know, someone's pulling the strings behind Judgy Judge. Nice. Judge the judge. He's, He's coming there. He's running. Look at the judge. Running. The group of your choice now has global power equal to its regular power. Link this card to the group. This is, requires an action from your Illuminati. It may be played at any time. That kind of speaks for itself, I guess. Literally, I have over 400 of these cards on the computer, so... AMA! American Medical Association. Well, now we have the CDC and the WHO. What does it say? We have a surgeon and a skeleton, and they're hugging each other. It means, uh, that could mean several things. Friends with the spirits of the dead, perhaps? Well, let's see what the card says for himself. The AMA can act to protect any science group. Trust the science or to help attack it, regardless of alignments. It gets a plus five bonus to control, destroy, or protect the science group. Peaceful, conservative, science. Uh, those of us with eyes to see can see right through this anyway. What science is there when the politicians don't even follow their own mandates? And mandates aren't laws. When you start to understand laws and what really is the difference between something being legal and lawful and when you start to understand UCC and going even beyond that into syntax grammar, it's all a fiction. It's all a fiction and they impose their fiction on you and because you concede to it, then you're liable. Part of the conspiracy. You're part of the big farce and you play along with them and you go up to court and they summon you and they say, are you so-and-so? And that name is printed in all block letters. And you say, yes, I'm so-and-so. Well, actually, that block letters is a corporation and you're there on representation of your trust fund. And man, let me tell you, that trust fund, when you're born, literally, your weight in gold is allotted to your trust fund. And you know what? They're just keeping it for you. When you get a bill in the mail, that's not a true bill. That's a statement. And you pay up saying, you know, I got to be a good citizen. But guess what? They've already dipped into your trust fund. So they actually get double amount. Research this stuff. Find out for yourself because like I can talk about it a little bit. But you send them a letter saying you send me a true bill. 
and watch what happens. They're not even going to respond to you. And then you respond saying you're in default and just see what happens. They'll revoke all your bills just like that. But you got to know what you're doing. So I'm going to share that in future episodes probably. But let's just get back to some of these cards here. I don't want to get too deep down the Taurus hole for the sake of time, at least for this show. And here we have the International Weather Organization. You know, when I started this show, I was like, man, I really want to talk about this, but this just seems way too far off. And it just might appear to some of my viewers as weird, but now it's just like too obvious. Like you can't even go outside without realizing like, hey, there's not a single natural cloud out there. But this card has an airplane with a string on it pulling clouds. Just look up cloud seeding and how they do that. I mean, it's so obvious. There's a tornado, which uh, interestingly looks like it has a pair of eyes. And a scientist, or at least a guy in a lab coat with a clipboard, looking like he's directing things. And you have these satellite dishes and different things on the rooftop in the distance. All places you get, get a plus six to defend against any disaster. But any disaster you visit upon arrival, except in space, has a plus four power. And there's a whole bunch of cards here talking about like tidal waves, hurricanes, volcanoes, tornadoes. And literally we know this. In our hearts we know this, you know. A lot of people are still in denial, but when you just look at the skies, just watch the skies and you can tell. Uh, all of a sudden it will just become sunny, just like that. And like what was a thick cloud cover just disappears like you know what when I was younger it was never like that if there was thick cloud cover here even in Calgary it would take a few hours to dissipate but here it can happen in 15 minutes now and you see those ripple clouds that are literally like the condensation of harmonic frequencies then you look up things like harp and all and you know like this is all vibrational warfare to keep your vibration under their fist but you know what with that I'm gonna have to refill up on some more broth I'm just this broth is just so amazing. But uh, let's go to a quick weather break. Are tornadoes sentient creatures? Details next on News with an Attitude. I'm Joe Knows All, bringing you news and views from your local communities and planet Earth. Today, we have a special correspondence with our live weather correspondent, Joe Blow. Straight to you, Joe. Yes, Joe, as you can see behind me, it's a pretty beautiful day, but pretty soon we're going to start seeing some chemistralis clouds developing overhead and no matter what it looks like we're going to tell the people that a storm is coming and that it's a weather warning even though it's nothing they haven't handled before back to you in the studio wow you want to stay indoors from those natural disasters because well quite frankly they are natural disasters there's nothing unnatural about them harp doesn't exist and the government has your best interests in mind especially your health stay tuned for more updates on news with an attitude. And talking about that, here we have a card, Weather Satellite. And, uh, I don't know, a bunch of umbrellas above this guy. It doesn't, I don't know what that, it's kind of a weird, weird picture. Uh, this guy, and then there's like a face in the background and this satellite we'll get into that in another episode but it says real weather satellites don't just report the weather they change it you may increase by eight or decrease by four the power of any hurricane tidal wave or tornado you may increase by four or decrease by two the power of any other attack to destroy including disasters against any place except space ones the satellite gets two action tokens but may not use them in the same attack that's pretty interesting. And I guess in order to counter that, you're going to need some air magic. We got this guy kind of, well, kind of looks like Moses. Interestingly, there's a pyramid on the other side of the uh, shore. He's doing something to blow the cloud backward. But it says 
Play this card to help protect the place against any disaster except earthquake or volcano. The power of the place is tripled for this one defense. Playing this card is an action for a magic group. Alternatively, you may sacrifice the top plot card from your deck to power this card. Discard it without looking at it. There's just so much in this game, man. And with the hurricanes, like, I mean, it's a disaster, yes, but this is an instant attack to destroy any coastal place. It does not require an action. Its power is 16 against a huge place, 20 against any other place. If the attack succeeds, the target is devastated. This attack cannot actually destroy the target. And it's interesting that all these hurricanes, like, all the dates of them line up on the exact dates. Check this out. Like, you're going to tell me that that's a coincidence? Yeah, okay, sure. But I think that's a lot of stuff that I've already covered in this show. A lot of food for thought. You know, just worth pondering. Like, really, some of this stuff is just really crazy. Like I said, even like a year ago, not not even a year, like a couple months ago, I wouldn't even have thought of sharing some of this stuff. But now it just seems too close to home to ignore. But you know what, guys, don't be discouraged because like I said, we have achieved a breakthrough and no matter what's going on in the physical, Causal Realm has already defeated it and they're running scared. That's why they're trying to push these things, you know, in the last little while, trying to escalate things, trying to really show off to those of us that have eyes because they want us to concede and actually say, oh, it's hopeless. They're way above us. You know what? How do you knock down one of those planes? How do you knock down like the really loud helicopters that fly at night? How do you do all of that stuff? You can't, not physically at least, but when you come at it in the spiritual dimensions, man, this is what unfolds. And we're seeing it right now. We're seeing it right now. Who knows? Perhaps by the time this video is released, a lot more will come to the surface. It already is already is it's just a matter of time guys stay strong and no source has got this but before i get back to practicing for another 40 hours today i actually want to share a bit of information that i have regarding the calendar uh the calendar if you want i've got a free digital download right now but if you send me an email link is in the description then i can send you the files and it's literally like a digital copy of the calendar with a whole bunch of pages. So we got like seven pages of outlines here. Uh, the first page talks about the tropical pulse and how that basically just ties in with the zodiacal tropical signs. But I don't use the traditional names because those correspond to the constellations which have now moved through processional slippage. We have literally entered into a new era and these constellations line up with different tropical signs. But I've outlined the correspondences with uh, Hebrew months, the, the body parts as it goes down from the head to the feet and also the body senses as described in the Sefer Yetzirah or the Book of Foundations which is a Hebrew text. The mother letter corresponds to those elements on top of you know the fire, earth, air and water elements. Then you have the single letters which are Hebrew and you have the planetary rulers. Planetary rulers. Won't get into that here, but also the deacons and how the spring is literally the ascent above the horizon. Then the summer is the descent still above the horizon. Then it descends below the horizon. And that horizon is literally an equinox when either the day is longer than the night or the day is shorter than the night. And then it descends through the fall to its lowest point, which is the winter solstice. And then it starts ascending upward toward the horizon. And when it passes over the horizon, that's the spring equinox. And of course, that corresponds with the full moon in Nisan, which is Passover. So that's the first page. Then the second page talks about the constellar months, which are literally the constellations and how they're named in the new era because we can't use the old names in the new era. And the number of days of each constellation, like how long the sun is in each constellation, the gemstones associated with, the foundation or the festival that's in each month, and then the description of each festival. Then the third page talks about the 28 Chinese mansions, which are constellations according to how the Chinese describe them. And that just corresponds with the sun and all of that stuff. It's not really a big deal, but it is syncretic with the calendar. 
And then there's the names of the full moons of the year, which each quarter has up to four full moons. And then those are named according to each quarter. And the lunar days are also named. Some of those names correspond to like uh, the actual Chinese constellations. But it actually is, when you go from the new moon to the full moon, it actually goes through these 13 levels of elementals, which are also used in the 13-day sequence, which I'll get to in a bit. And it goes from darkest to light and then it goes back to dark and there's correspondences on either side so on one side the first quarter is represented by the tree which also represents the elemental of wood but on the other side the last quarter is called the lion day which corresponds to the constellation of simha or the lion which used to be known as leo so the elemental is also represented in one of the constellations. And there's 12 constellations plus the seven days before the winter solstice. And that's literally a shard of obsidian, which actually corresponds with the very last of the elementals, which line up perfectly to, what, 28 slash 29 days. Then the next page is 28 Arabic lunar stations or manazil. Manazil is plural of manzil, which literally is just each quarter divided into seven equal sectors and they're named according to the Arabic system. The thing is that the Indian Vedic system also has a system of 27 nakshatras, but that is not compatible with syncretic calendar. And there's a real reason for this. It's because firstly, they don't line up with the four quarters of the year. Secondly, the lunar day is not 27 days and it literally also has no bearing on the solar progression through the year so nakshatras are not included in this system because quite frankly they're not syncretic we got to realize you know syncretism is syncretizing all the things that are the true science but what is man-made it just doesn't line up with what source has ordained and then after that page we have a page describing the series of days so we have each quarter has seven segments in it sometimes they shift a little past each cornerstone but for the most part there are seven sections and each of them is comprised by 13 days you take 13 times 7 you get 91 and then you times it by 4 for each four quarters and you get 364 and then there's another day that falls out of time which is literally the last day of the last month which is Hakurab, which is the scorpion, or the first day of the three days that correspond with the winter solstice. It's kind of funny how that lines up. The last day of the last month and the first two days of the first month are those three days. But that adds up to 365 days. And so right there you have that. And then each of those seven sections has 13 days in them, and those correspond to the elements. And of course, each of those also correspond to one of the constellations. This is all a fractal, so every layer is a mirror of itself, really. And then, of course, we also talk about the seven-day week, which is unbroken since it was standardized by the sons of Chaldea. And, of course, that corresponds to the seven heavens. But right at the bottom of this page, I have an outline of each of the different sections of the year and how to interpret each of the different sections. And between the zodiac and all what I've already talked about, it's already outlined. But then we have each of the phases of the luminaries. And this is the last page where I actually outline for each year it's different. The solar eclipses, the lunar eclipses, the dates of all the full moons, and the names of each. And then when each of the five planets enter each sign and when they begin retrograde and all of that stuff. So that basically is the download. You can just email me and I'll send it off to you right away. Right now it's just uh, written up by hand, but I'm going to digitize it and make it pretty cool. And uh, if I send you the one I wrote out by hand, I'll also send you out the digital one once I get that put together. So yeah, if you're interested, let me know. This calendar is literally the crux of waking up in a new state of being into a new awareness because we can't use the Gregorian calendar anymore. Even some of these calendars, like man, the rabbinical Jewish calendar, it has been perverted since the Babylonian exile and it's not the calendar of source. When you look at the calendar of Enoch, it's strict. Every day is on the day and yeah, it has 360 days, but there's also those days out of time and that corresponds in my calendar to the seven days at the end of the calendar. And of course, the three cornerstones of the year, 
in the spring, in the summer, in the autumn. Those correspond to the feast times of the Jewish calendar. But it's very interesting that there's passages in the Hebrew scriptures that actually say things like, for example, the oracle of Isaiah, where he says, bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is iniquity. Even the solemn meeting. This is Yahweh speaking. And Yahweh says, you know, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Well, obviously, their Sabbaths don't correspond to the Sabbath of source. Because he says, your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hates. They are trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. Really? This is what Source is saying. So obviously there's some perversion here. There's something that's not lining up. And if you do your research, you'll find out that this is true. But I think this episode has gone pretty well. Like I said, I've got to get to practicing. So I'm going to cut here and we're going to meet up back down in Studio B around the piano. But I'm going to sign out here. So stay optimistic. Tap in. Know your destiny. Tap into that destiny and you will start to manifest it as this threshold is crossed and as we find ourselves in this new paradigm manifesting the kingdom of heaven. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart. I really do. I really do. I really do. And I decree blessings and prosperity and abundance and wholeness over all of you guys every single day because we're all part of this high vibe tribe. We're all in this together. And once this fog dissipates, once this veil is finally pulled back, we will literally reveal our fullest potential in this earth plane. So I'll check you in another video. Joel signing out once again. Agape. Salam. Namaste. Chotep. Studio B, practicing for 40 hours.